site is experiencing multiple Keto and Euclid level containment breaches. Full site lockdown initiated.
Mankind in its present state has been around for a quarter of a million years, yet only the last 4,000 have been of any significance. So, what did we do for nearly 250,000 years? We huddled in caves and around small fires, fearful of the things we didn't understand. It was more than explaining why the sun came up. It was the mystery of enormous birds with the heads of men and rocks that came to life. So we called them gods and demons, begged them to spare us, and prayed for salvation. In time, their numbers dwindled and ours rose. The world began to make more sense when there were fewer things to fear, yet the unexplained can never truly go away, as if the universe demands the absurd and the impossible. Mankind must not go back to hiding in fear. No one else will protect us, and we must stand up for ourselves. While the rest of mankind dwells in the light, we must stand in the darkness to fight it, contain it, and shield it from the eyes of the public so that others may live in a sane and normal world. We secure. We contain. We protect. I am 05-01, known on the internet as Elder Echoes, and we are Horrible Tales. We have a variety of terrifying tales and awesome adventures we play twice a day, every day but one. Go to our website, horribletales.com, for the unredacted calendar to get database summaries of past shows and information about our cast and crew, at least as far as your clearance level allows. Be sure to check our archive of past anomalous events at youtube.com slash c slash horribletales. Special thanks to Roll20 tonight for being our virtual tabletop. And to Darren Curtis Music, Ghost Stories, Incorporated, Somnia Music, and myself for some of the tunes you'll hear in these tales. Foundation Agents, tell everyone who you are and who you're playing in this terrifying tale. I am Zach Rules on the Bird app. My name is Zachary Dowdrick, he, him, and I will be playing CT. I almost had a flawless takeoff, and then I forgot I was muted. Hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox, and tonight I will be playing one of our agents, Killian Graves. I am Kay. I use she, her pronouns. You can find me on the bird app at Puppy Lover12398 or some amalgamation, therefore, of unusual channels. And tonight I will be playing Dr. Emmett DeBoer, he, him.
And I am Hugo Guzman. You can find me online pretty much anywhere at Sevatar underscore underscore underscore. And it's actually been so long since I've played this that I no longer remember who I'm playing. And I left my character sheet on my other laptop and I'm desperately trying to pull it up as we speak. So please expect an update from me momentarily. <laughs> Don't you just love that? You are a doctor. I can't inform I you. Am a, yes. <laughs> I am a doctor. I want to um, say Jane, but I don't know why. Yes, Jane Vandermeer. Who yeah, is, Jane uh, Vandermeer. There yes. you go. Yes, who is a yes. doctor of some some renown. <laughs> and Great Cthulhu would normally join us, but they are unavailable this week. They will rejoin us next week. I'm sure nothing terrible will happen to them whatsoever as the result of an anomaly. And now, Agent Graves, if you would, a recap of our last episode, our last containment, oh so long ago. Very, very long ago. <clears throat> Item number SCP-29256. Object class, Keter. Keter? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Special containment procedures. As the completion of Operation Dostoevsky Phalanx on Redacted, SCP-2956 and SCP-2956-2 are considered neutralized. All containment efforts are to be concentrated in the Java Trends to monitor the remains of SCP-2956 and to impede all civilian attempts at surveying the seabed within 20 kilometers of SCP-2956. SCP-2956-1 is still considered an active anomalous entity, as analysis has shown heat signatures at multiple points along the body of the submarine. Along with radio transmissions or originating from within the vessel itself, no attempts to communicate with SCP-2956-1 is to be made by Foundation vessels. The 2956 designation will be eligible for reclassification as neutralized in 56,000 years, give or take 200. At an estimated time at which SCP-256's structure will collapse completely due to benthic marine detrivores and natural marine weathering process found in abyssal zones of the Indian Ocean. Research is to continue regarding the identity of the GRU personnel from Tehran and all other links to SCP-2956's construction and history. Research into the location of the anomalous linen bust and the three missing personnel is to continue with a priority four ranking. The following addendum has been classified top secret by order of the O5 Council. Unauthorized personnel will be terminated upon attempting to access addendum SCP-2956-1 via methic men Mimetic. Mimetic, there we go. <laughs> made up word for this game. Mimetic kill agent. You have been warned. Site 156 designation Deep Water Faithful constructed following the incident. Redacted on redacted designated SCP 2956 3 has been compromised by agents of redacted. Per orders of the uh, per orders from 05-4, MTF-9 Tail Fox Gamma has been dispatched from Site-19 to investigate, recover data, and if possible, contain the anomaly. If containment is not possible, redacted is authorized. Foundation vessel redacted, lost, with all hands approaching SCP-2956-3, following encounter with redacted. Ninetel Fox Gamma was able to escape the sinking of Redacted and reach Site 157 via experimental submersible. Upon entry into facility, communication with MTF team lost. Awaiting updates. Also, thank you for the raid carrying comfort. Yes, thank you! Yay. Welcome, Mom and Big D's Cashews Dad, and everyone else you brought along. These cashews. These cashews. Well, 
I guess Big Dad was bored enough that he started, he just uh, uh, launched a leaf blower simulator, so. <laughs> <laughs> I see how it is, dude. I see Ben, I see. Leaf blower simulator. That's a riveting game, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm familiar with that game. Yeah, it is amazing. <laughs> You can leaf blow anything. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that makes a lot more Bless. sense in the concept of Big Dad, the context of Big Dad. Then. Is it as enthralling <laughs> as Power Wash? Simulator? I was just thinking Power Wash Simulator. <laughs> Power Wash Simulator, yeah. It, it's it's on that level. That level of that main Kind of game. Mm -hmm. So, what, if, what the classified recap, of course, redacted was the fact that as soon as all of you, except Dr. Vandermeer entered the uh, deep water faithful facility you were accosted by some kind of strange anomalous beings and that's where we left off so that's where we're picking up with Agent Crane, CT <coughs> Agent Graves and Dr. Emmett being assaulted by hybrid creatures part fish part man let's begin with Graves uh, uh, so, as soon as, uh, these creatures, uh, came out of, um, the moon, like, oops, came into the moon pool, uh, Killian was immediately on edge, uh, even though Emmett, you know, wanted to make peace talks, um, so, uh, she is ready to basically, like, line back check the, uh, the fish man who is now coming towards Emmett. I don't care that she is a small woman. I will linebacker the shit out of this fish man. Okay. Maybe. Give us a brawl roll. Good luck. Yeah, <laughs> you ready? <laughs> CT is bravely standing behind Graves. Brawl? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 unarmed combat. There we go. I was just like, uh, 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 I'm like, that's not a thing. Derp, derp, derp. Derp, 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 derp. Uh, 24% success. Hell yeah. What's your threshold? 60. Okay. So, wouldn't it? It's under half. Yep. So, a hard success? Correct. Dr. Emmett. Yes. Roll to get the hell out of the way. Oh, is that what I'm doing? Okay. Athletics. Athletics. That'll go well. <laughs> Good news, everyone. I have a character sheet. <laughs> Hooray! Oh, wait. I need this die and this die, not these dies. Okay. Oh, shit. Uh, that's a 17 out of 40. CT. I do actually get out of the way. Roll, uh... <laughs> yeah, right. All I know is that we all needed heavy machinery and none of us had it. Still, yeah, that's successfully amazing. hide behind the larger, scarier people. And Dr. Vandermeer, you're not here, but I need you to roll a percentile for uh, reasons. Agent Crane. And no matter what you roll, tell me some terrible number. Okay, great. <laughs> I, I, got a, I got a two. Oh, nice. holy crap. Ooh, shnikes. You're in the wind, sir. He's hiding behind one of the poles. Just gone. Just gone. Just gone. Just gone. Jesus Christ. Oh, boy. Uh, uh Tyler, mm -hmm. I rolled 82. Nice. <laughs> Agent Crane appreciates you. <laughs> Graves, you body check the thing that's trying to get to Emmett while well, Emmett rolls behind uh, a pillar. Well, CT is actually directly behind you, like mirroring your moves <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> However, out of the corner of your eye and your peripheral vision as you body check the one going after Emmett, you see two more tackle Crane and they disappear into the dive pool with a loud splash. <gasps> You're now grappling with the one in front of you. What do you do? It's trying to bite your face. Oh, I'm, I'm 
I'm sure it is. Um, I have grenades, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I pull one out, unsafety it, and let it bite my hand and put it down its throat. Athletics. Mm -hmm. Oh, please. Please. 45% of success. Yay. Damn it. Graves protected yes. you from the one, but there's like 20 of them in this dive pool. Cool. Uh, I want to make a quick attempt to make a potion that will render them docile. Okay. Please don't use the pheromones. I didn't say pheromones. Did I say pheromones? I said a potion that will render them docile. An I elixir. Know. And if I use their pheromones to do it, to, to ease them, you know, that's how that works. Uh, Go ahead and roll uh, Anomalous Flora. Okay, I need you. Wait, where's the where's the pretty dice? The pretty dice will lead me well. Come on, pretty dice. <laughs> and they do. That is a 56 out of 80. Okay. CT. Any change in action? Uh, I'm still f hiding behind the warrior. Okay. Who just unsafety a grenade? Yeah, that's like a good idea. <laughs> and <laughs> and shoved it in the thing's mouth. <laughs> yes. So the thing's body, and then you are in between me and the explosion of the grenade. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. <clears throat> Emmett. Yes. What do you do with your concoction? Uh, so we're pretty much surrounded by water that these things are probably breathing in because uh, they're fishmen. Well, so it's oh. the submersible's in the dive pool and then there's oh, a catwalk okay. around it here on the catwalk. On the catwalk, so okay. The so I think what I want to do, <laughs> this is so bad. Um, so I want to take it and put like some on like my neck and around my neck, and then attempt to put some around the necks of my compatriots. Okay. Um, at the same moment that you're desperately trying to spray everyone with the spritz you yanked out of your uh, emergency biological containment device, <clears throat> Which, by the way, for the audience, is a briefcase that when Dr. Emmett pushes the button, it, like, unfolds like Inspector Gadget nonsense, and it's like a full yeah. of a lab. So we're not going with, it's just the giant science book that, like, opens up into a lab? No. The science book's mm -hmm. in the briefcase, though. <laughs> science 101. Science 101! <laughs> uh, at the same time, the Graves shoves her arm down the thing's throat. Blood gushes everywhere from a horrible wrist wound. And then Graves kicks off from the monster and explodes, flinging Graves and CT into the dive pool. <coughs> and blowing the monster mm -hmm. apart and a couple other monsters nearby. I need you all to make spot hidden checks. Except for Andrew here, of course. What check? There's not a spot hidden check, my love. Search? Uh... Alert? Yep, alertness. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a critical success. I got a 5% out of 60. Yes, it is. I got a 16% out of 80. Okay. Nope. <laughs> nope. I got an 80 out of 40. Uh, Graves and CT. For a brief second, you glimpse door the big airtight door goes deeper into the facility. It slides open, and you think you see three people dressed in uh, urban camo, but the gray, the shades of gray urban camo, not winter camo, just shades of gray urban camo, uh, with tactical vests, gas masks, and hats with weird symbols on them that you don't recognize in full tactical uh -huh. gear. And then everything goes black. If I hit the water, it like. Is that? Yes. 
is, is do they look like anything that we've seen in our base? No. But I will. If I'm in the right room, give you a picture. I see. Green. Like that. Like. <laughs> so, CT. What are you doing about? I, I'm, I'm dreaming about being torn apart by an octopus since I failed that role miserably in, in through the search in the last uh, session. Okay. Uh, for for octopus things. Graves, what are you dreaming about? Uh, I don't really dream anymore. She just really has nightmares and night terrors. So uh, she's dreaming about the first time she ever met an SCP, which was a couple of years ago when her whole team was wiped as a uh, civilian compared to like SCP standards. <clears throat> Dr. Emmett, what are you dreaming about? Am I dreaming? You are now. Okay, I'm dreaming. Um, I think... He's dreaming he's... about that movie date he wanted to have with Killian. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly, but similar. <laughs> I think he's having this actually really lovely dream that he's got like our whole group, like uh, Dr. Vandermeer, CT... Uh, just there, uh, Graves, and we're all like at his apartment having a really lovely meal together, just like hanging out in, in the way that like coworkers that are actually friends hang out, like just shooting the shit, like talking about some latest Kate. CT is laughing, which is not a thing I think Emmett's actually ever seen, so it looks kind of distorted and weird. <laughs> Dr. Vandermeer. You'd been called away for a special assignment duty. <clears throat> Your team is probably convinced it was actually some kind of punishment duty, but you don't think so. Okay. You think it's been pretty fascinating feeding uh, D class to SCP 173 for the last two weeks. Nice. <clears throat> this is a reward. You are currently in the midst of an argument with a D class. Uh huh. Who is refusing to go in the containment chamber and is telling you to shoot him in the face. He'd rather do that than deal with this thing. When, just like the rest of them, everything goes black for you. Okay. What do you dream about? Uh, Dr. Vandermeer dreams that she is naked, covered in bright blue and ochre red war paint. She is riding on the back of a horse, the open step before her, wind in her hair. She is home. I'm very happy to be there. At least one of you is going to be... Two of you are going to be sad to wake up anyways. <laughs> you were all yanked out of your dreams. The first thing you notice is your eyes readjust to the light. Is the smell. Old wood. Polish. Furniture polish. Copper. Uh, copper or Blood. Like copper, like uh, old house copper. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> few smells you don't recognize that are bitter and gross, but you can't quite pick up what they are. Can Emmett pick them up with his, uh, you know, specialty in these kind of weird things? Not yet, no. Okay. You notice the floor beneath you is cold and hard. It's wood. Uh, you hear the groans and movement of people waking up all around each of you as you all slowly adjust to the light in here which is a chandelier looks like it's gas lit or it's really old style electricity it's dim and dull it's not modern bulbs and see each other all laying on the floor including dr graves Manning for the three of you however there's no crane mr crane graves ct oh where is everyone? I know it just like sits up. 
Were you Anything? together? Yeah, uh, where, where are the you rest of us? You are all in the same room on this hardwood floor, and as you roll around and look at each other and realize Crane is missing, but Vandermeer is here, covered in a white lab coat that's not really white anymore. It's pretty bloody. Uh, <clears throat> what happened to your lab coat? D class. Uh, Vandermeer pulls out of her pistol. What happened to you guys? I was making fishman compliance herbal remedies, and then I don't know. I was protecting Dr. DeVore. And you say that, and Emma just smiles. And that's when CT, Vandermeer, and Graves, you three realize one of the weird smells you've been smelling is a lot like concentrated fish oil, and it's coming from you. From your necks. Except Vandermeer. Vandermeer, everyone else smells like it, not you. Okay. Protecting someone, him from what? Someone decided that it would be a good fish idea man. to shove a grenade down the fish man's mouth. It worked, I thought it, it? Was a, it was a good idea. It seemed intuitive. Several of them blew up. Which is a shame. I would have liked to have spoken to them, but they were being hostile. I'm sure that was I, I can't get them. rid of the smell of them. Just seems to follow us everywhere. So do any of you know where we are now? No. Well, if we're anywhere near where we should have been, we are several miles underwater. I don't think so. And yeah, I'd like to just kind of observe where we are. A foyer to a manor, like an old style English manor. And I feel like Emmett like sort of gets up and like runs a hand down the wood and describes like, I, I can't do this cause I'm a lay person, but like describes exactly what kind of wood this is like the dating of year of when it would have been like harvested kind of a thing based on like branches, things like that. Like to like attempt to almost pinpoint sort of an area where we might be or like a classical style of homes. Cause he knows his plants. Anyone who has any trained ranks in it can now roll uh, SCP knowledge. Any ranks in what was that? Sorry. SCP knowledge. Great. This is unlikely because I have a very limited amount. Uh, wow. So that's a pass on my part. Rolled 30, 39 out of 60. Nope. Uh, 46 out of 10. I, I failed. 62 out of 50. Graves? I'm rolling. Oh, okay. My brain went that way. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, <laughs> you're rolling SCP knowledge. Oh, I don't think I have that. I have third, the, the, I have the science. The uh, third, the third, much of science. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to repeat that? <laughs> Do you use it in a sentence? <laughs> Graves has knowledge of the science. Uh, thaumaturgical. Okay. Uh, yes. No, that wouldn't help here. Um, yeah, I don't have SCP stuff. Okay. So for Vandermeer, then, mm -hmm. you're the only one who passed. Uh,. Yeah, SCP-1461. Oh, that's bad. That's real bad. Why the hell are you in this thing? Uh, okay. One. Sorry, can you repeat the number? SCP-1461, one which four. has <coughs> an entire site. Site 6 built around it. Task Force Lambda 30, Whiskey Tango Frock, Foxtrot, Mobile Task Force, what the fuck, is stationed here at all times specifically to contain this building. Great. Uh, sh Vandermeer checks her pistol. <laughs> um, you seem to be rigorously playing with your gun. Uh, Dr. Vandermeer, if you could enlighten the rest of us, that would be optimal. I'll tell you what you know, and then you can tell them what parts of this their players know. Uh, sure. Any unusual activity from SCP-1461, like people suddenly appearing inside of it without any warning, is to be reported to on-site level 4 supervisors who will implement A47 daybreak procedures at their discretion. 
That's nuclear destruction. Any yeah. operatives entering SCP-1461 are to be fitted with full NBCA protection and armed escorts. NBCA, of course, is nuclear, biological, chemical, and anomalous protective gear, none of which you're wearing. And it is a uh, high-priority target for members of the Church of the Broken God, who have been trying to get this thing back since it was discovered in the early 1900s. I tell them that. All of it? Yeah, all of it. So, how long do we normally have before they blow it up? Well, that depends how long it takes them to realize we're here. So, so they're so going to they're going to blow us up when they see us. They're going to or blow hear up. us. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> there are here. sub levels we should, we can, and I say should flee to. As he says, that, as she says that, you hear a scratchy record noise coming from an intercom system somewhere, and you look around until you notice on the wall one of those old mouth tubes you would have had in the late 1800s, early 1900s to talk through levels of a big house. <clears throat> And the voice of a old man says, I am what you have made me. I am choice and I am tyranny. Forgive me. I am then and I am now. What gods they will be then. I am evil and I am flesh. I am the trap and the trapped. I am beauty and I am chaos. Children are selfish. I am the worm and I have broken God. Then it cuts off and there's a really high pitched squeal that makes your heads hurt. Oh, Somebody had way too much fun writing riddles for too long. So, how, how far away is the people surrounding us? There, are there? There are no people in the house. There's this, there's an SCP facility built around the building. You'd have to go to a window and look out. Well, we should not foyer, do that. Right? <laughs> Which, of course, you know, then maybe somebody outside would see you if you did. But yes, you're in the foyer. Okay. Uh, Without getting close to the window, can we see how far away that the... Drawn the... curtains. Thick velvet ones. Do not draw the curtains. CT Vandermeer <laughs> bags. But you, that, that whatever that noise was coming off of that speaker... That thing was creepy, and that's in here. Yeah, we should go to the sub levels, like Doctor Vandermeer says. But before that, no, um... no, 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 no. It, it's it's if it's in here, it knows about the sub levels. It's in the sub levels. That's drawing it. That's going towards it. Okay, so you, See, you if have we two run options. Out, if we run out the front door and run fast enough, they can't nuke us because we'll already be at the walls, and they'll have to nuke themselves to do it. That's yes, not they how will. containment procedures work and Vandermeer is right. If they have orders to nuke this place, with them or without them, they will nuke it. I'm afraid that is correct, but let's see um, if we can help with that. Um, we'll help with preventing that. But you and have I'm two gonna... options. <clears throat> we either figure our own way out, or we let them know that we're here and we all decide to die by nuclear fire. I have a plant waiting for me in my office that needs attention. I can't die. It would be cruel and unfair. If we're um, here, he, it, if we're here, it means fourteen sixty one has broken containment. We have to reestablish containment. What is fourteen sixty one? A house. No. Well, this is up to you if you tell them, Vandermeer. But the house is fourteen sixty one dash one. Fourteen sixty one is the machine. Fourteen sixty one is the machine. Oh, the machine. That is, well, is gonna... both an accurate answer and one that. Does not answer my question. Wait, what They're... kind of machine is it? And Emmett actually looks kind of excited. Well, sub level 10 contains something called the orb room. It's above my pay grade to know what's in the orb room, but it's called the orb room. So. Graves, can we go? Can we go, Mom? 
I mean, right. I don't really know what other options we have right now, so. Yes, but I do have things that will be helpful. Uh, and I, he'll go to the suitcase and open up the lab suitcase and pull out several, uh, so like four of the specialized, you know, like containment outfits that have been described that we're technically supposed to be in. Uh, those don't exist in your, in your, in your suitcase. Oh no, they don't. No. Well, you, as close you probably as I can get have to... one biological suit, but you don't have NCBA, only the B, mm. only for you. <laughs> you only have the B. Only the B. You only get the B. Can I have multiple Bs or is there only a singular B? That's just one, because that's your case. Was there anything mm. in my... No, I don't even have my duffel. Where am I asking? I don't got a duffel. I think Hugo just read the whole entry. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, hmm. All right, we'll just be careful. We'll, we'll just be careful, and we'll go down to the sub-levels. We'll reestablish control. I'll have an interesting conversation with the machine, and it'll be great. So, so Doctor, can you explain to me what is down there in a way that dying to it is going to be preferable than the quick, painless death of a nuclear explosion? Tyler, can I tell them about the worm? Yes. Okay. No, CT, I'm sorry, I can't do that. What I can do is tell you that if, what, if whatever is down there is breaching containment, then everyone else on Earth will have wished that they had died in nuclear fire. So it's up to us to reestablish containment. If we fail, the whole world is screwed anyway. Oh, I don't like the uh, sounds of that. Fine. It's almost Easter, and my mom makes the most fabulous Dutch chocolate cake. And we can't let that not happen. All right, we're gonna fix this. So he like gets up and starts dusting his knees off. Let's go. Where would we go to establish recontainment? Either either the orb room or one of the sub levels below it. Is the orb room not in the sub levels? Yeah. Yes. Or orb room is level ten. There's two more levels below that one. Okay. Any one of them could be not working correctly, so to speak. Okay. And, Let's and, uh, get down to business. As yes. as as Vandermeer like could, like as her memory continues to like come back to her, uh, like you see her like just like oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> oh come on, Doctor Vandermeer, and and Emmett's gonna like walk over and put like an arm around her shoulders. We'll, we'll handle this. It'll be fine. Don't don't get yourself into tizzy. When you start thinking with a unhappy attitude or that it's already, you know, failed, then you've failed. But if you keep your mind open and positivity and light, you can accomplish anything. Dr. Vandermeer just looks at, at her. DT is also I, giving I, a look at, at, at Dr. At Emmett. Like. Vandermeer finally says, Yes, that's what the original owner of this matter thought as well. Oh, well, I bet they were a smart cookie. Uh, Broke God, Graves so. is walking down the hallway, the foyer, and like looking for stairs that go down. The photographs <laughs> system kicks on again, and this time it's Crane. What the hell is this? Why are you trying to put that in, in me? You get the hell away from me! And then screams and wet tearing noises, and it clicks off. Uh, oh boy. Vandermeer screams, oh my god, and starts running for <laughs> any stairs going down. Uh, I'll follow Vandermeer. Graves, Vandermeer and Emma just kind of run off to your right towards the door. What you see is spiral staircase going up, doors behind the staircase going deeper in, and then doors to the wings, east and west. Vandermeer and Emma are just bolting for the eastern wing door because it's the closest one to them. Uh, None of them I have stairs it? going down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if I was going down, I don't know. She'll uh, go. Give me an uh, intelligence roll. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go to the kitchen. 
I'm gonna make a sandwich. <laughs> also, give me an intelligence roll, CT. Please do not look out the window. Uh, success. Uh, Regular probably success. A quick access to the cellar through the way the servants used to get in and out of the kitchen, because that's where the wine is. Okay. Uh, let's go to the kitchen. CT, what's I, I, I failed the role to do the thing that I already said I was going to do, <laughs> which I already told her was what I went to, was going to look for. So CT doesn't find it. Graves, give me another intelligence roll. CT says the kitchen's probably in the west wing with the bedrooms and goes that way. That's... <laughs> Look, uh, CT's never been in a manor before. Don't blame the guy. Hard success. Yeah, the kitchen is going to be off of the main dining room, which is going to be behind the grand staircase because you show off your impressive house when you live in Guys, this way. And she just, like, <laughs> tilts her head and, like, walks through the double doors. She opens them to go find where the grand dining room is. And Vandermeer, CT, and Emmett, do you follow? Uh, yeah, because I don't like yeah. the idea of splitting the party. Darn. Yeah, no, uh, CT? Emmett goes where Graves goes. Wait, wait, the kitchen's not this way? No. Why would the kitchen be next to the bedrooms and not the dining room? I, I, it's... Look, I'm... Simple logic? Lot of, it, it, it's simple logic when you don't have a lot of rooms. You don't have an extra room for, for dining. Okay, this, well, this ain't your studio apartment, CT. It's yes, this is an old mansion. CT, give me the alert check. Fucking rich people. Of alertness. Yep, and stealth. Because he's running back and forth. Because he got really close to one of the big windows to go to that way. Oh, Jesus. I barely passed the alertness check. Okay. 27 out of 60 on the stealth. Nobody outside notices a thing, but you get close enough to the window to peer through the cracks in the big curtain. Um. And you see that the manor wall is wood like it should be. But on the other side, like the window is here. And the wall keeps going past the window, almost like it's a bay window, except you realize it's not. They've built an additional outer wall onto the wall that the house is. And it's not, it's concrete for like a foot. And then it's steel for like six inches. And then there's massive steel girders at an angle like it's holding the house up. They've reinforced this building and then secured it so it almost like it can't free itself. And then uh, the glass itself has a layer of glaze of some kind of resin, and then another layer of reinforced uh, armored glass, and another layer of some weird plexiglass substance <coughs> plastered onto it. Through all of that, you can see maybe 50 yards of uh, gravel, and then a steel wall, like a perimeter wall, with like blinking green lights every few feet and there are cameras everywhere and on top of the wall you see at least three armed SCP personnel just standing around that must be site 8 site 6 site 6 6 mm -hmm. alright we just had three sixes in a, just straight in a row on screen that, that can't be a, a bad sign of course not no, not in this fucking hell hole in the fucking universe all right. All right, fine. Let's go to the kitchen. Let's get down to wherever we got to go. Is it like, do we crawl on a dumbwaiter or something? Like, okay. I'm where I there's access to the wine cellar, which will have access to more underground things from the kitchen. Yeah. I don't believe I'd fit in a dumbwaiter if he like assesses his bulk and, you know, height. <laughs> Just his height. <laughs> CT, have you never watched Downton Abbey? No. Do you think CT would be an individual to watch Downton Abbey? What is Downton, Downton? Downton Abbey is a show that is designed to distract us from the world that's going on now by showing a fake world that didn't happen back in the old that's days. That's literally the definition of TV shows, CT. I also have not seen Downton Abbey, if it makes you feel better, CT. She's still like, I'm not having this discussion. Argument? 
Ex- moment Pul- of character exposition. The p- poultry comments. Let's let's go. Hmm. Does the rest of you follow Graves? Oh, yeah. you continue to have your debate about Downton Abbey. No, Emmett follows I, Graves always. Andermere follows. Okay. You pass underneath the stairs, and you realize the layout of the house is each of the wings would have contained probably uh, four bedrooms, each with its own bathroom. There's two master bedrooms upstairs. Uh, you pass through the foyer into a ballroom that has a library to the east wing, and then a kitchen and a dining room to the west wing. And once you get into the kitchen, it's got a pantry that has stairs going down into what would be the wine cellar. The house see itself is plants? just a lot like the top level of the Resident Evil movie house before everything goes insane, where it's just old and dusty and hasn't been used and quiet mm-hmm. and empty. Do I see any plants? Nope. Okay. Alright. Uh, after you, uh, Graves, and he'll open the door to the basement wine cellar. However, as you go to enter the kitchen, alertness check from Graves, who's in the lead. <laughs> hey, boy. Uh, CT has seen Resident Evil. How how like the Resident Evil house is this? Uh, I spend eight luck points to not have a failure. Uh, not exactly like it, but you just as Graves is about to open the door, you're like, there should be security cameras everywhere when Graves spots one in the kitchen just before opening the door. Through the little inset window in the kitchen door, looking right at it. You look around and you realize there aren't any in the ballroom. Or at least you don't see any. There are in the kitchen. There's a camera in the kitchen. And then you realize, wait, because you spent the luck points. The camera's not facing the kitchen door, it's facing away from the kitchen door. It's facing directly towards the cellar. It's not monitoring people coming in. It's trying to monitor something coming out. Um, I can do something about this. We just need to get me close enough. That's fine. We can enter safely, but we just can't go to that other door yet. Yeah, just yes. Give me a few minutes though, and I can fix that. Okay. Uh, so what? What are you? What are you? What are you? T- what are you planning? Oh, nothing. I, I have a degree in robotic space technology. I'll just plug into the camera and set it up to a continuous loop. Which to the other three of you translates into, I'm just going to hack Site 6. What could go wrong? <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I, we don't have a ton of options here. Yeah, like, I'm uh, not going to uh, stop anyone. There's, wait, but, except from, you know, getting us nuked. There, there's, there's no camera in the ballroom, right? No. No, because it's clear the security is set to catch anomalies exiting the lower levels of the house, not the upper levels. The upper levels, and Vandermeer can confirm this, have never been seen to be anomalous. It's only down there. The house is just a house. It's what's underneath that's horrible. So so there's probably another way in than the obvious way. Yeah, probably. But that way will probably also be cameraed. Not if we make it. Oh, so you want to, like, <laughs> dig through the house floor, or, like, blow up a small section of the house to get to a lower level. There's no cameras in the ballroom. It, it seems like a better, a smarter move at this point than fucking I... with the cameras. Can I inspect the flooring of the ballroom? Yes. Uh, I guess. Search. Uh. Or uh, if you have like a science skill you think might apply, you could roll it. Actually, your scientific anomaly skill would apply here. Roll that. Can I use paranormal conspiracy? Failure. Yes. Uh. Eighty-three. We'll do search. 
Ooh. I failed. Okay. I, I got I got a 15 on an 80 for paranormal conspiracies. Yeah, you're convinced that if you don't go if you go straight through the floor recklessly, some horrible thing's gonna happen to you. Like you could go down, but you're gonna be careful about it because you know once you remove the wood flooring, you'd probably like I don't know, launched your teeth or ghost wood or fuck knows. Ghost wood. So. Yeah. If you want to try blowing up the floor, fine. But that's going to cause an- more issues down the line and be a potential new containment breach because now there's no cameras watching the hole that we just made. There's also something you need to know. Uh, what do we need to know? The lower levels are infested with man machine hybrids. Oh, my favorite. That face graves. Like the one who broke my hand last time? No, not like that. Think more grotesque. Oh. Man mach- cyborgs? It, when I when I say machines, I mean machines, not like robots, like like clockwork. Um, Emma just looks so- disappointed. I don't know, Emmett. Is it disappointing? You've seen Hellboy. Emmett. Hmm. Those, yes. those you... screams we heard earlier was probably someone being turned into. You say someone. It was Crane. I that know. That was Mr. Crane. I know. Emmett, can yes. you just put it on a temporary loop? Well, the, yes. There's just like a five minute loop so we can go downstairs. Okay. All right. Uh, are you going to try to go through the floor at the same time, CT, or just let him try this? I, I, it doesn't seem like Graves is going to hand over any explosives, and CT doesn't have any. <laughs> so... You would be correct, sir. She is not handing you any explosives. And, and I, I doubt there's going to be like a pickaxe or anything that will uh, pull the hole. floorboard up. No, <laughs> there's no pickaxe. Graves is successful in containing the floor. Emmett, roll computer science. <laughs> CT, while you're really bored and kind of annoyed, roll alertness. Are we sure it's not robotic science? I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I, 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 I'm going to spend some luck here mm-hmm. because I, I, I refuse to fail a roll that I have 80% in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So. I'm gonna spend enough. I'm gonna spend the. It's. I have to get down to 80, right? Yeah. To pass the roll. Okay. So that's. I'm gonna spend six luck. Okay. Okay. I got a 22 out of 60. Heart if success. I recall, doubles does something. Yes. Hard success and a critical hard success. Crit, uh, crit success is either five percent or less, or doubles for me. Okay. To train. Also, if you fail and get doubles, that's a crit failure. <laughs> uh, Yikes. So So while Emmett masterfully hacks the camera CT, you're like, wait, wasn't wasn't he right-handed like an hour ago? Ambidextrous. I don't know this yet. I'm going to shut up. So, you're the conspiracy Um, theorist, so you notice. Yes, Vandermeer. I, w- while they're all doing that, I would like to make some rolls in, first of all, SCP knowledge and then temporal science uh, to see what would have brought us here. Because um, Vandermeer, Vandermeer's current concern is that containment of the worm is failing. Um, cool. So she, she wants to make sure that, uh, A, that's not happening. And B, why are they here? Oh. Uh, why is I mean, why why are you using the wrong hand? I had to pull your picture hmm? up. You're using the wrong hand. Cool logo. What do you mean? He like keeps going. I, I mean, you you were right-handed when oh. you were uh, pulling out the shit on the on the dock. Oh, I'm ambidextrous. Just keeps going. I'm also going to spend luck to pass my SCP knowledge roll. Okay. 
Uh, only have to spend two, thank God. Graves, people are complimenting your cosplay. You should show off your patches. Oh, hi. So I have my Epsilon patch, and then I have my SCP patch, and I'm waiting for my M MTF and my safety pen patch. And then, of course, Dr. Emmett has, is sporting the shirt, too, now. That's right. Okay. Uh, Vandermeer. Mm -hmm. There has been time displacement, but you feel like it's probably because time passed. Not because, you know, there was a time warp or anything like that. Like, there is a time jump. You didn't immediately teleport here. Okay. You feel very well rested, and you hadn't slept in, like, 32 hours when you went, everything went black. Okay. You're also not hungry, and your arm hurts a little bit. Like, maybe where you were force-fed fluid food. Oh. Um. Oh, no. And, uh. What SCP containment uh, knowledge would tell you, but uh, the house didn't bring you here because the house is not the anomaly. If the worm brought you here, why would it deposit you in the house? The foundation didn't bring you here <laughs> because there'd be somebody over an intercom yelling at you to do something <laughs> by now. Yeah, yeah, there would be, hopefully. And you were in a different place than your team. Something else brought you together and took a member away. It's <sighs> like a riddle. It is like a riddle, but you feel like the answer is right there, like you've seen the answer before, like in the first session. Alright, if you just give me the head sign that we're all ready to go downstairs, I'll hit the last button and it'll set the five minutes on the camera. The I know who brought us here. Be, help, your teammates might be able to help you with the answer to that riddle. Maybe you should ask them if anything weird happened before you blacked out, guys. Did anything weird happen before you all blacked out? Um... Well, when I was flying through the air, uh, about to hit the moon pool water, uh, the doors to the containment, uh, no, it was just a facility, right? It wasn't yeah. a containment facility. Yeah. Uh, the doors to the facility opened and there were three individuals in gray camo with an insignia on their helmet that I didn't recognize. Wait, did you see people? I just saw fishermen. It doesn't they surprise me a bit. What did the insignia look like? Uh, you can just say you describe it, yeah. She, yeah, I'll make she describes it. CT, do you uh, confirm? I confirm and I add that they were wearing masks and that their clothes were uh, ugly and nondescript enough that I couldn't tell if they were looking at us or we were seeing their front or their back. Chaos Insurgency, Vandermeer, the same ones that assaulted the facility when, lock, when the breach happened in Session Zero. Okay. The ones who got away with some anomalies, including one that made people forget things. Yeah. Uh, Vandermeer shares all of this information. What is the chaos insurgency? Yeah, what's You're gonna that? Tell them in your own words, Vandermeer slash you. Know. <sighs> it's complicated. That's what it is. Long story short, it's a group of former Foundation employees and administrators who decided to use anomalies for personal gain rather than to secure, contain, and protect. Well, those don't sound like good folks. Whoa, 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 whoa. So if they were there and they grabbed us and they brought us here. That means people on the wall are the chaos people and not our people? There's no. definitely foundation uniforms for the people on the wall. They probably slipped us in here with... They probably inserted us here with an anomaly of their own. I, I don't know how they would do that, but they can. Maybe they used a way or something. Although I'd be very concerned if there was a way. There's a third way out of here, though. Also that, well, that's how you got here. There's a way what in is. here. Yeah. Ways do not necessarily go out. 
graves, you would know what a way is. That's thaumaturgical science. You would never ever call it magic because you're graves. <laughs> thaumaturgical science is weird physics that let you bypass normal reality, the normal methods of movement through reality, spatial anomalies, wormholes. Vandermeer is right, CT. Just because there's a way in doesn't mean that way also connects out because that would just be just as dangerous and as blowing it, a hole in the floor. And even if it did, you would need to know the proper thaumaturgical scientific application ritual to use it. Question um, is... Sorry, you, go ahead. That, and if you don't know the proper procedure to use it, it won't let you back out. Question is, why would the Chaos Insurgency want us here? They're not exactly in the business of causing XK class scenarios. Maybe they want to stop what's ever happening. Maybe one somehow of the... that concerns me more. Well, yes, but what if one of their anomalies that they have told them something was going to happen here? So they picked up people who could take care of it, plopped us in here, because that was easier than trying to make it nice with the SCP organization itself and telling them that, like, oh, hey, by the way, your shit's going to break. There's also or, one other thing that... Sorry, go ahead, CT. Or they're planning on yanking some shit that's down in the sub-level, and they need patsies. And our names all just became Patsy. I have an Aunt Patsy. There's one Either more way, thing that concerns me. It's our job to secure, contain, and protect. So if there's something wrong here, regardless if we're supposed to be here or not, we have to fix it. When was the last time any of you spoke with a member of the O5 Council? The day Never? that I... We accepted our assignments. Okay. It was 05 04. Four. Four. Is oh. who met us in Oregon. Oh, those were the people that gave me the. Um, and Emmy, Emmy starts talking, but then like he clearly gets kind of confused because uh, his whole memory changed <laughs> that day. Well. Let's go see if the worm's out of containment. All right. Okay. One, two, and then so, once everyone's ready, he'll... Oh. What exactly is this worm again? It's bad. Uh, everything. It's an interdimensional monster of some sort. This entire manor is a giant machine that was constructed to contain the worm and trap it. I don't know its exact details. It's it's associated with death and destruction. Um, the the original owner of this of this manor built it to contain the worm. He mostly failed. But the worm also didn't come through. That's why the Foundation has orders to nuke the site if containment fails, because it means that some kind of cosmic horror is coming through. Is it W-O-R-M or W-Y-R-M? O-R-M. For the players, why? for the players, this is like Werewolf the Apocalypse if the SCP Foundation contained the worm. All right, so on the count of three, I'm going to hit this. We're going to have a quick, cool two or three minutes to go through that door. One. Button. Yeah. One, two, two. three. And he presses <laughs> like something. <laughs> you hit the button, well. and your computer makes noise, and green stuff goes across the screen, because that's how it works in real life. And then yep. you all head to the door to the cellar. But we're not throwing RAM at it? Not today. <laughs> not today. Not today. <laughs> There's only one person who can throw RAM at a problem and he's not here. <laughs> um, hey, Tyler. Yeah. Can I roll to know anything about Project Palisades? You could feel free to shoot that down because that's a huge ask. 
Also, Tyler, do I realize that I'm left-handed and I wasn't before, or do I just think I always had the ability to use my left hand? Your brain refuses to comprehend the subject, and if he talks about it, you'll change the subject subconsciously. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> no, you would not know anything about that. <laughs> okay. I had Glad to decide I how that tied into my cannon real quick. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's great. Uh, hopefully that won't fly here. Anyways, you get to the door. It is sealed shut, and this door is reinforced steel, very modern, unlike the rest of the house around it. Doesn't appear to be a handle. I hack the door. <laughs> it appeared to be a network hub. Um, Graves, I feel like this might be your specialty. But then when the five minutes is up... I can recycle it again. What's going on? Door. Difficult. I'm going to go... He wants you to pull the, the door room. up. The cellar door is giant, modern, and steel with no handle. Uh, can I roll anything or actually can I search around the general area of the door for any security panels oh my god oh my god you can yes roll demolitions I'm trying to find security panels not blow up the damn door weaknesses that helps you find weaknesses oh um V- Vandermeer suddenly gasps really loudly. Vandermeer? Dr. Vandermeer? You can just are you all right? You don't have demolitions. I'm spending one luck point. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway. Okay, I succeeded. Demolitions. What you got, Vandermeer, while grave searches? Are you all right, Dr. Vandermeer? The worm didn't break containment. This is a trap. The, the chaos insurgency inserted us here so that the foundation would nuke its own site. The, oh, the, worm, so... the, we, the worm didn't bring us here. I'm getting the fuck out of the kitchen. Either Dude. way, we have to go down here because this is the only way out. There's no containment breach. It doesn't matter. We being here is a containment breach to their protocol and we'll nuke it anyways. You only if they try this. to open the way, Matt Graves, you're the only one in the party who has any chance of it. We for should maybe what? listen to open Dr. Way. Vandermeer for a minute. The way that, much, that everyone thinks brought you here. If there is one, you're the only one with any chance of finding it or using it because you're the only one with thaumaturgical science. Uh, what was that, Kay? Uh, Dr. Vandermeer, should we be proceeding with this then or should we take a moment i think we should take a moment because right. there is a chance that if we proceed into the sub levels we will be breaching containment of the worm and that would be far worse than getting nuked okay so why don't we take several steps back i'll the, the loop will do itself it'll be fine i'll just be a few minutes i can always redo it again if we need to, but why don't we commence back in the foyer and perhaps you'll find the thermatological science? The way. The way. Yeah, I'm the not, way. I'm not confident. I've never I'm way. not <laughs> No, 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 why? not 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 you, Dr. Vandermeer. Uh Mrs. Graves. Why? Do you have experience anyway. in that? Uh for forty but I, I I matched my demolitions. You do find a way you think you could bypass the door. What does all of my training tell me in this situation? Uh, roll, uh, power. I use power for gut instinct just for all the players to know, too, because it's your moxie. Uh, my power is 90% and I rolled a 15. Ooh, this is way nice. too easy. This door is way too sealed. There's no breach here. Nothing's wrong. You think Vandermeer's right. Okay. Uh, she closes it back up, makes it look like it did before they touched anything. Um, let's go back to the ballroom or the foyer, whatever you want. 
There is one more consideration I feel like you all might care about. Dr. Crane is almost certainly down there being transformed into some kind of horrific man-machine hybrid. Or, so, and this would pop into Graves and CT's heads. Graves with gut instinct and CT is a conspiracy theorist. Is that part of the lure? Is that even real? The last time I saw Crane, he was being taken by the Fishmen. And unless the Fishmen are in cahoots with the Chaos Insurgency, I don't think he's here. Down there is that an interdimensional worm thing and people making man machines. The the worm the makes worm? the man machines. That's like its thing. What is the survival rate of becoming a man machine? Non-existent. So he's already fucked then. We don't all have to get fucked with him. That if was- that is even true, if what we heard was even real, because the worm thing didn't get out. And that what we heard wasn't real. Someone's setting us up. That was my thinking about Crane already being dead. But I did feel like I should mention that to you in case you wanted to go in there and rescue them. You see this, like, torn look on Emmett's face as you say that? This, this whole thing's a setup. They're fucking with us. He doesn't need to be saved. Crane, Crane is, Crane's probably fine. Uh, Emmett looks at Graves and is just like, do you think he's fine? Uh, Are you asking me? Yep. Like I said before, it wouldn't unless the chaos insurgency is either friendly with the fishmen or went on a crazy mission to go rescue him to just dump him in here. Neither which those are very plausible in my mind. And Emmett sort of like lets out this like sigh of relief and nods his head and sort of smiles again and looks like, thank you. Thank you, Graves. I, I appreciate that. So, give me 10 minutes. I'm going to see what I can piece together. To see if we can push our way back out the way that we came in. Uh, while Graves is doing that search, I have a question, Tyler. Uh, considering I succeeded so well on hacking into that security camera, mm-hmm. is there any chance that I can get back into the footage of other cameras that are around and if I can spot anything that might have happened? Like when we were knocked out or us being brought in or anything that might have been helpful in terms of that? Uh, you're able to access the feeds, but none of them are in the vault or in the foyer. Okay, but any other areas that might show, you know, Crane being moved around somewhere? You don't see Crane at any point backtracking up to six hours from before you appeared. However, okay. at the relative approximate moment you think you woke up, there is a distortion anomaly on all cameras simultaneously. Hmm. I'll make like, note of not, that. Not like something was tampered, but like there was an energy. There was an energy surge when we were brought in here, uh, distortion anomaly on all the cameras at, oh, 700 hours. Can you tell us where in the house? All in the house. Oh. Okay. Every single camera. Where, where, oh. where are the other cameras? Uh, uh, where? Main entrance, facing it. So if something mm-hmm. came out of the main door, you'd see it. Mm-hmm. Several cameras in the kitchen, all mm-hmm. of which were disabled. And then there's also several cameras in a random closet of the master bedroom which is where the secret elevator is that goes straight to the basement all right yeah emmett notates all of those and informs everyone about them
Graves activates a save versus death roll to not fail, getting you out of the house without instant terror. <laughs> I mean a save versus death versus death foe, not a roll. Hard success. Excellent. Which I say out loud as a reminder to the other players, your votes for each other are good for one save versus madness or death, and you can always ask, can I use it in this instance? And if I say yes, that means failing that roll would have gotten you or the whole party killed. <laughs> Oh boy. It's true in this case. <clears throat> uh, the first Graves wanders up to the master bedroom and almost performs a thaumaturgical ritual there before realizing that it's not the right place to do thaumaturgical ritual and wanders into the library itself. Which is where the way that was used to bring you here was activated. Now, all four of you can work as a group to help Graves out here, but we need Graves to describe to us what Graves' thaumaturgical science looks like. What's yeah. your scientific interpretation of a magic spell? <laughs> Vandermeer, you can help here. You know how this works. You can probably help the most here, I mean, but all four of you can chip in. And it's so curious. He finds this so interesting. A whole new science. <laughs> My brain hurts already. <laughs> you, so, especially Emmett would notice because Emmett is the closest to Killian. Killian is usually like cool as a cucumber, like no furrowed brow, totally chill. She's trying to do this thaumaturgical science and she is concentrating so goddamn hard. Like, mm, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't know if this is a thing in this system, because I'm playing but I feel like Emmett sort of like goes up to her and like puts like a friendly hand on like Graves' shoulder and is like, hey, take a moment. Breathe. You've got this. You're really competent, Graves. You know what you're doing. As someone who has been through multiple psychotherapy sessions, uh, he's <laughs> going to attempt to use his uh, experience uh, as a patient to calm Graves. Uh... Dr. Vandermeer is going to pull out a notebook and doodle a quick uh, thingamajig. Uh, Tyler, I am creating Bye. a memetic, uh, memetic sigil um, to impart uh, a feeling of calm and focus on onto graves, memetically. Okay. The three different Bye. approaches in life. Love all of you. So much. The three different hey. approaches in life. Friendly gesture. How my therapy can help you. Fucking with your head. Um, Killian will look through the house, mainly the library, for. Uh, well, she'll get salt and from the kitchen. Um, a candle. And then um, she's going to pop open a couple of her bullets for the gunpowder. Okay. Um, she's going to make a circle for all four of them um, out of salt. Okay. And she is going to make um, outlines of the thermatog thermatological. Thermatological. Thaumaturgical. You play yeah. vampire. How how is this hard? I know. It's, it's my mouth. Okay, I've been saying my words mouth. wrong all day. You could ask okay. Tyler. He's been on the phone with me all day. I've been saying words, fucking crazy. Um, thaumaturgical symbols that sh are needed. She's going to pour them out um, in gunpowder, so that way when she lights them, they get etched into the wood. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, and Emmett will offer you any kind of like weird or dried plant-based matter you might like somehow think you need. Uh, Emmett has it. Okay. Um, and she was like looking for like one of like the longer like candles so she can like reach over and light things on fire without, you know. Candelabra stick. Yeah, she's looking for a candelabra stick. Um, and within this circle, she like has four smaller circles for each one of them. That is what her thaumaturgical science looks like. Okay. 
gunpowder and salt. Supernatural hunter style. <laughs> That's perfectly fine to use that. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That uh, style. Sure, we'll go with that word. Uh, flavor. Go with that flavor for it, because in the SCP universe, they all call it thaumaturgical science, but it's just magic. <laughs> um, and no one knows how it works or why, it just does. Uh, you complete the ritual, and you activate it. What language do you speak when you use the incantation, because it requires sound waves, too? Any language you want, except English. Uh, you can even make one up. Who speaks Arabic? Definitely sounds uh, authentic, then. I like it. <clears throat> um, especially since most thaumaturgical ruins are similar to Sanskrit. So, you complete the incantation, and uh, there's no wormhole, there's no stargate for the rest of you. There's just this... <laughs> everything fades to black, and there's this sensation of weightlessness, and then the sensation of being sucked into something way too small for your body size. It actually hurts. Then a lot of spinning and vertigo, and then all of a sudden there's gravity again. And you slowly come to, and you blink as your eyes readjust to the light in here, and you realize you're in the largest library you've ever seen in your entire life. Oh my god, this is amazing. Where did you take us, Grace? Stacks and stacks and stacks in every direction. Vandermeer checks her pistol again. <laughs> and that's when you begin to realize that the stacks don't all line up right. Almost like some of them are non Euclidean in an endless library. Um. Well, if I had to guess, Emmett, it would be where the chaos insurgency originated it to begin with. This place is beautiful. There's so many books. Also, I knew you could do it. You did wonderful. He just smiles at you. That's when something wanders past. It's like a Repeat. giant spider made out of words. And it's just got a book in every leg. And it's just shelving them as it goes along. And you look in another direction and you see something else wander past it's past it's like humanoid anthropomorphic anyways uh it's got a face and eyes and nose but no mouth just smooth skin and it's like dull gray like an alien gray but very much taller like a slender man and the hands are just lanterns They're just wandering around lighting things um dr vandermeer where we are i'm ducking under the table <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know where you are, Vandermeer. This is the Wanderer's Library. This is where all the uh, Vandermeer go. joins CT under the table. Uh, yes. If Vandermeer goes under the table, um, I <laughs> get great with him getting Emmett and we're going Grabs in. Grabs Emmett. We're going in. The table. Yes, we, we are currently in the Wanderer's Library. Does that ping anything for me? Do I know what that is? Everyone in the SCP Foundation is trained on the Wanderer's Library. It's the hub of all knowledge, and every book that ever existed will exist or could theoretically exist through every universe and every dimension. Endless halls that carry all knowledge. And that's where we pause for our mid-show break. Good boy. Woohoo. Woo Don't go anywhere, <laughs> audience. We'll be back in about 10 minutes as we refresh our libations and I swallow a gallon of Dayquil. We shall return shortly. Oh, Tyler.
site is experiencing multiple Keto and Euclid level containment breaches. Full site lockdown initiated.
someone. Please. Someone use the broadcasting station at once, please. Oh god, what is that? What is that? The site is experiencing multiple keto and Euclid level containment breaches. Full site lockdown initiated. And we've returned to the URTL. 
you were in the Wanderer's Library, and you would have some of this information, Vandermeer, but in this case, it would actually be Graves who would have more of it, so the two of you can decide what to share or not share with the other two. But the Wanderer's Library is a ill-understood facet of the SCP universe uh, outside of the game. For the players and the viewers, it's actually a sister project to the SCP Foundation, so you can write SCPs, but you can also write stories for the Wanderer's Library, because it deals entirely with a separate organization called the Serpent's Hand, Masters of Magic in this universe. <clears throat> the, the only thing Vandermeer would really be interested in getting across is that the Serpent's Hand does not like uh, the Foundation. They call us Jailers. Because they are a, an anomalous rights group, basically. Uh, and uh, they, they don't like that we secure, contain, protect. Wizards are reality deviants, according to the Foundation. Dragons are anomalies, according to the Foundation. Fairies, all the cool things that people who love the library love, the Foundation contains. Outside so. of Graves, is anybody wearing SCP? Oh, yeah. Hugo, or Vandermeer's lab coat has symbols on it, and DeBoer's lab coat has the symbols on it. You're probably the only one who's not. Uh, Vandermeer does start taking that stuff off. Okay. And I will say, you can just say, I cover my patches if you choose to, but Killian might not. <laughs> uh, you would know, Killian, that the Serpent's Hand doesn't like the Foundation, but the Serpent's Hand does not control the library. They use it as their base of operations. They don't control it. They don't own it. The library is free to anyone who comes here that follows the rules. SCP or not. And, nobody and really... the rules are? Uh. <clears throat> yep, there you go. Hmm. One second. Uh, you can't have open conflict within the library itself. You cannot... Uh, bring anything into the library through any of the ways all transdimensional portals in reality at some point cross to the library. So you can't bring anyone or anything here that would destroy the library itself even if it was able. can't steal the books. You can read whatever you want but you can't take it without permission out of the library. And uh, you, you, you cannot try to cause physical harm or mental harm of any kind to librarians uh, the pages which are the spider things or the uh, oh my goodness what do they call the lantern hand dudes <laughs> they're basically the people who help you find lanterns those are the rules okay. beyond that I mean, you could live here no one would care um, Killian goes over the rules with everyone I'm gonna get so excited um, and she's and then she ends with yes the serpent hand has their base of operation here but they don't own this place so you guys can choose what you want in terms so, of hiding who you are that's up to you so we can just walk the fuck out of here you'd have to use another way I yes. we can walk out of here, yes. But I'd have to find a way that is not... that leads to somewhere that we want to go. Yes. And you would also probably tell them, be cautious who you talk to, because you can't cause physical violence in here, but you can screw with people lots of other ways. And literally anything could be in the library, and when you say that, on a a floor above you on a walkway that looks over the area you're in like a balcony you see a guy walk past with uh, old muddy boots and tattered homespun robe and some kind of leather armor covered in all kinds of grime and fluids dude's missing an eye just like completely messed up eye socket no eye patch nothing epic viking beard with a raven on either shoulder and you can hear thunder rumble in the distance he just walks past doesn't acknowledge you emphasizing the point the things you see in here could be anything. Probably be careful. Once, uh, uh, once she's covered up all her foundation-related insignia, uh, Vandermeer will step out from under the desk. 
I think Emmett's gonna watch and see if Graves covers up before he does. Nope. Yeah, if Graves yeah, that... doesn't cover up, then he won't <laughs> cover up either. And I think he's gonna step out and go over to the nearest uh, little like spider, word spider, and be like, "Excuse me." The page ignores you, but when you say "excuse me," one of the mouthless lantern hand dudes spins around and floats towards you. Oh, oh hello. Um, maybe you could help me. Uh, I'm looking for one or two books, maybe, that I could look at. Continues to just hover there. Uh, one, is there a uh, Thermitage 101 book? And then Emmett, like, takes, like, a legit five minutes to describe some of the things he's been studying at SCP, like, with plants, specifically attempting to get that one plant from that one foundation to, like, live in uh, the like in our verse instead of in his own scp and ask if there's any books that can help him with that it spins around and starts wandering through the stacks oh yeah, we're gonna go on a book follow hunt follow Emmett because lord knows if i lose sight of him now i will never find him again mm -hmm. man it's like an excited puppy like this is a giant <laughs> library so many books to read I'm I'm staying with Vandermeer. She's the one who seems to have, have the right amount of uh, paranoia about the situation. <laughs> that is, it it matches his comfort level. <laughs> uh, Vandermeer is actually going to hang nearby uh, and wait for the lantern dude. What what are those called, by the way? I miss the name. Yeah, uh, I had to look it up. Uh, well, wait, wait for Emmett to be done with the lantern dude because uh, she also has something to ask ask about. Okay. Uh... Librarians are the strange things that only exist at the, or I'm sorry, the archivists are the strange things that only exist at the main desks. They have no eyes or mouths. The docents are the mouthless humanoids with lanterns for hands that help you find things in the shelves and also enforce the rules. So docents. Docents. There we go. You follow That's... the docent for an indeterminate amount of time because time seems to flow oddly here, meaning we can jump back and you can ask your question. But eventually okay, you get to no a problem. stack where the docent stops and floats in front of a very specific section and your eyes are immediately drawn to a book. <laughs> uh, and the book is... I just had it. <laughs> the Seventh Book of Apocryphal Visions. It's very thick. Seventh Book of Apocryphal Visions. All right, he's going to take it. Thank you. This is uh, book book one. This looks like the thermatological book. It is. Uh, what about the... Uh, is the other one also available? And then we can pause and Vandermeer, you can do your thing. Okay. Um, so, Tyler, I'm going to PM you the question because I'm asking it in a different language that I don't think anyone else here has. Okay. What language um, is it? It's Arakesh. Okay, no. So I know Greek. The, <laughs> I understand that at so all. So the, the language that Vandermeer speaks is very, very strange and very guttural. It has a lot of, like, W sounds, especially after the Ks and the Gs. Uh, it has very few vowels, you notice. It's mostly A, E, and O. Um, but she seems to speak it pretty fluently. Uh, and effortlessly uh, to the docent. What the, what? Gesundheit. Uh, sorry, I'm, I, I also have to write this out, Tyler. While you do that, I'm going to let, I'm going to Emmett the first few sentences from the book, and you can tell me if Emmett would keep reading our... In the year of our defilement, 44,211, we awoke to find that man and fae had merged once more. Magic blossomed in new flesh all across the life plane. 
The strangling veil that has choked our voices and soaked our blood for thousands of years was undone in an instant. The jailers, book burners, grail bearers, and even the simple feds crumbled beneath the rising tide. Shadows can never survive in the sun. At least one in three humanity are now blessed by the blue, capital B. And what a blessing it is! Only the greatest thaumaturgy of the Illuminati or sorceries of the Sons of Salem can compare to the raw lascivious nectar that now fills our veins. Magic now rivals the godlings themselves, and every day more souls are reborn in cleansing light. And yet, the source of this miracle has been a mystery. Until now, read on. Yeah, I think he does. I think he's intrigued. Um, he likes all kinds of manners of sciences, and he really wants to read this book and the other book and just get as knowledgeable as possible so he can be as helpful as he can be. Okay. <clears throat> hey, it's Tyler. Yes. Since this library has, like, all the books that could or have ever been written. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm going to message you on <laughs> Emmett, you will wake within the chrysalis and see the self that is written beyond the lids of the eye. The serpent shall shed its scales and spread its roots when blue stars shine in the light of father. The meaning of life will be known. The spawn of daughter will be made to thrive. Knowledge fills your brain. Poetic. What could go wrong? Everything. Everything could go wrong. Nothing. It's all wonderful. This is great. I'm going to watch Hugo's face carefully. While hundreds, if not thousands, of hypotheses as to the nature of the blue exist, there are three primary theories that have developed over the past two years. Here is the theory that will teach you the nature of this thaumaturgy. Nalka practitioners who believe the New Age was brought about by the victory of the Grand Karsist Ion over the Demiurge Yaldabaoth. Traditional Nalkan groups <laughs> have long believed that Ion <laughs> was not killed or imprisoned and is maintained by the neo nalkins and Broken Church, respectively, but instead ascended beyond the plane of creation to battle Yaldabaoth on humanity's behalf. Read on to learn the secrets of this sorcery. Keeps reading. You mention any of this out loud? No, I'm just reading. I mean, you can great, see the title great, of the book. Perfect. You can see the title of the book. Uh, I mean, yeah, they, they probably, to you. They probably but, had to go a bit of way to well, get Actually, to yeah, if you're book. looking for another book, yeah. And Emma's just sitting quietly or like the, walking quietly. The title like, wouldn't, the wouldn't set off any alarms for Vandermeer. <laughs> the uh, title. Also, sorry, not sorry. I may or may not have tempted chat to spend points. <laughs> Emmett, yeah, Emma just keeps reading. He's he's focused on his his reading. He's not gonna say anything. I'm an instigator. <laughs> oh, I saw the summon the elder gods. That's why it was this book. Oh shoot! Oh Tyler. no, it just came. I I messaged you. Oh no, here I made up Zoom. the title of the book, but then I went this direction when he, yeah. when they paid for that. Oh, you I, did it. Zoom. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I messaged you in Discord. Did. That's interesting. Oh boy. I'm curious how you would ask for that from the docent, so we'll get to that in a second. Me? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Me? The docent wanders off and Vandermeer follows. Hey C T. Yeah, yep. Yeah, do you wanna it. fight do you wanna fight the Illuminati with me? Uh, Vandermeer looks completely serious when she says that. Um, Speak in CT's language. I'm, I, I mean, which Illuminati? Are, are we? <laughs> they, yes, um, but <laughs> it's it, it's there's too many. Uh, why do I bother? All right, let's do it. Follow me. <laughs> We're going to go destabilize the post Cold War neoliberal world system. <laughs> All right. Again, Vandermeer looks totally serious. Huh. Oh, I'm gonna uh, look at the docent. Uh huh. So, so we got any books that we can can get here? Every, every book, every every book. It just right? passively looks at you. That that includes like journals, yes. It just impassively looks at you, but its hands move up and down. It's lanterns. Um. The, the 
can I get a, a journal of these chaos people uh, of of what they did to us? It wanders off, but that means you're not following Vandermeer. And I'll catch up with you, Vandermeer. Yes, uh, Vandermeer like gives you a thumbs up actually, uh, and like she looks like really happy. Like if you if you've Wait, seen that gif of like Zach Galifianakis on the motorcycle where he, he's just like. <laughs> like that's Vandermeer. Like hell yeah, this is exactly Probably. why she wanted CT to to come along. We probably should have decided on a you know meeting place, but whatever. Here we are. So I have a play. I have a meeting place with Vandermeer. I'm gonna go back to where she is once I'm done. Uh, what do you say, Graves? I think you P you PM, didn't you? I did, but he wants me to ask you out loud. Uh, I want to see how the character like you could still DM it to me and wait till everyone else wanders off, but I still no. want to know the exact wording. That's up to you. Uh she looks over at Emmett, who's like nose fucking deep in this book right now. <laughs> yep. L looks over at the docent and she's just like Emmett mutters under her, his breath. The perfect merging of flesh with machine. This is brilliant. Carry on, Graves. I... <clears throat> this is probably cheating. Or, I don't... I don't think this is breaking any of the rules. At least, not any of the rules I know. I like to see if you have any autobiographies on me it wanders off okay she follows emmett follows but he does the follow where like somehow he's walking and not, not running into up. things but he's but he's not looking up he's not looking up but he like somehow manages to follow without like tripping over something this style of thaumaturgy is very cleric oriented Emmett. Very summon the Elder Gods oriented. Uh, it's not a Cthulhu entity though. It's it's a timeless entity that brings order to the universe out of ultimate chaos. Its enemy is chaos personified as a different god. Hmm. But the god has fallen. It sacrificed itself to contain the ultimate chaos and became broken in the process. You might call it the broken god. You can regain a fraction of its power though through the proper rituals and merging yourself with technology to become more ordered. Better, harder, faster, stronger. Mm. Emmett debates how much of himself he would be willing to give to a machine. You figure, oh. you know, why not try it? Replace a finger, who cares about that? If I don't like it, I can stop, right? Just just a finger. Yeah, a finger. I can do a finger. Stop anytime you want. Yep. I really hope this isn't like Cyberpunk 2020 rules where you like replace your pinky finger with a USB drive and all of a sudden human rights don't make sense to you anymore. <laughs> uh -huh. Human rights don't make sense. Yeah, I think he'd replace his pinky. I don't know. Yeah, well, we'll see. But we must deal with Vandermeer because Vandermeer might accidentally yes. or intentionally randomly change the course of this entire game. Vandermeer. I'm trying to actively. I'm sorry. She's I'm got not. goals. Vandermeer. It wanders for quite a while. At some point, CT actually catches back up to you and will do your retcon in a minute, CT. That doesn't surprise me. This is the Wanderer's Library. Um. Um. Eventually it stops. It doesn't stop at a stack, though. It stops at a way that's permanently open. It's just like a rip. It's shaped like an arch. It's like library and then not library within the arch. Within the arch is just what's clearly an SCP foundation building. Mm -hmm. The containment room it just mm -hmm. has a single desk with a book on it. 
the oh, creature God. stops exactly 15 meters away. Uh, Vandermeer also stops. She turns toward the creature and bows uh, respectfully. Uh, and then she, she pulls out her notebook and she tears out the focus meme page uh, that she showed, that she drew for Killian. Uh, she folds that neatly in half uh, and like just just like gives it a name and like puts down like writes down her own name and below that and hands it to the docent uh, and Vandermeer says thank you for your assistance uh, please accept this humble submission to the Wanderer's Library it accepts it and bows back and then disappears and leaves you there 15 meters is quite a distance but you have good eyesight uh, single chair, single desk, not a drop of fluid in sight. And a book with Sanskrit on it that you can read. This is a chronicle of the Davids. And you look up in the corner and you see stapled to the wall, site 172. Or, I'm sorry, site, site 76. Okay. Um, Vandermeer will start to approach the gate and... Uh motion for ct to follow and she'll say ct do you know do you remember the night you were recruited to the foundation yeah do you remember that they gave you an option regarding a certain mimetic symbol that would have rewritten your entire world line so that you'd always been a member of the foundation no well that's good are you a currently a member of the foundation? I, I, I'm not sure what the, how where that technically lies. Um, Perfect. Uh, and CT, sorry, your CT, Vandermeer hands you her gun, uh, and she says, "If if you see me try to kill myself, I want you to shoot me." Uh, and then she goes into the gate uh, and uh, steps up to the book. CT, do you get closer? Um, I, I, I mean, if I'm supposed to shoot her, I'm going to get closer and get her I to be in a better range. I need an exact inventory of everything you have on your person at this moment. I need that from Vandermeer, too. We, I, we, will, we will pause and wait. Okay. Um, I have this written down somewhere. No, I don't. And this is whatever you think you'd have had, CT. Exact. Leave nothing out. Exact. Okay, this is going to take a while. You might want to go back to the other players. Oh, I... I, I uh, oh, oh, this, or or this do you is... want to do the retcon for I, CT? I, I imagine this will be pretty quick for CT. Let's do it. Um, because... He, he probably had all his stuff back in the room on the on the ship when it started crashing and sh all shit went to hell mm -hmm. um, and he was locked in there and drowning mm -hmm. so he didn't probably think to grab anything so he pretty much just has what he's wearing and the gun that he was just handed okay Sorry, I did warn you. Oh, so, forgot underwear. So when CT gets the gun, he's gonna be like, so wait, um, if you try to kill, shoot. So like, should I shoot you in the thigh or something? Like. No, in the back of the head. I need to be dead. If you... If you try to kill yourself, kill... Yes, because what I'm going to try and do is open up my vein, the veins on my wrist so that I can complete writing that book. I can't be allowed to do that. Okay. Uh, I think that's everything she'd have on her. Oh, duh, cell phone. It's that second to last one from the first group that mattered. Thank you. Yeah, I, I figured. <laughs> so, CT. Well, first of all, I need you to roll uh, power, Vandermeer. 
Uh, how long are you going to read the book? Give me minutes. Um, I want to say 30 seconds. Uh, 30 because seconds. she's because instead of reading the book, what she's going to do is try and like find the last chapter. Uh, and well, she she's going to find the chapter for the t- period for the, yeah, she's going to find the last chapter and she's just going to quickly take pictures of like the pages rather than like stand there and read it. Ah, good. I'm only going to need three power rolls then, one for every 10 seconds. Uh-huh. What could go wrong? But only do them one at a time. Tell me the results as we go. Okay. Uh, so the first one was 86. What's your power? Oh my god. It's it's 80. Uh, I spend luck. I spent six luck. I have that. For your next roll, you have to roll 74 or lower. Uh, I rolled uh, 38. For your next roll, you have to roll whatever 74 minus 38 is or lower. Okay, 74 minus 38. Or 26. No, it's 36. 36. Ah, it's still a really tall order. That's a 77. Okay. So what you see, CT, he opens the book, he starts taking pictures. Twitches in the first 10 seconds, like violently, keeps taking pictures. And then uh, pulls out a sharpie and writes something in the book. What do you do? He Hugo do got anything. boosted by stolen fires. By the way. Oh, thanks. He doesn't do anything to his wrists though. There's no blood. No violence. He's just writing the book with a sharpie. This is a weird book. He could be writing something. I'm just going to go up and shove him away from the book. Shove her away from the book. I got a 10 out of 50. Nice. Roll athletics. Please pass. Oh, that's a failure. That is. Save it with luck? No. Um, There's no saving that with luck. I, I, I do have enough luck to save that. You may pass your boost from Rachel to CT, Vandermeer. Oh, I do that. I do that. I, okay. I will use the boost to make that. You can reroll uh, your tents, please. The, uh, what, huh? So it's a percentile. You can reroll the first part of the percentile. So, like, what'd you get the first time? Ninety-seven. So now it's just a seven. Plus whatever. So it's something seven, whatever you roll on the one d ten. I need some help, please. I got that boost back to re-roll my last power check. <laughs> no. But what happened that on the didn't... second roll, CT? I, I, I rolled a 9, so I still end up with a 97. Okay. Oh, that's not fair. Uh, you resist the urge to grab a Sharpie you see sticking out of her back pocket and write in the book yourself. And you tackle her. And you go down. She goes down. The desk gets knocked over. The book flies across the floor and through the portal. Dosen picks it up and disappears into the library with it. Immediately, blaring sirens, red lights, lockdown alarms from the site that you're in through the portal. And you hear the familiar sound, Vandermeer, of a reality anchor firing up as the portal starts to shut. Athletics checks! Uh, pass. 43. CT, <laughs> don't fail. <laughs> er. Woohoo! 18. Oh, thank God. You both go diving through the portal just as the door flies open and you hear heavy weapons fire. The portal snaps shut and you're back in the library. You got 20 seconds worth of pictures, Vandermeer. 
you don't remember at all what you wrote in that book. But you wrote something. Five seconds worth. Uh, she still profusely thanks CT. Yeah, and, you might uh, have saved the world. However, SCP-140 is now no longer in Foundation containment. It is in the library. So. Wait, was that our universe? Yes. <laughs> uh, Vandermeer, like, pats CT on the back and says, CT, thank you. You did really well. Let's go catch that docent. Okay. Um, wait. So the rules of the library. You can't <laughs> Don't interfere mess with up the, the docents, yes. You, but but you can't mess up the books, right? Can't take them without permission. Cannot cause violence against a docent. I, I would imagine this, the the library doesn't let people write in the books that they have. Probably true, but it doesn't remove the writing that was done in the room on the desk. But yeah, and it wasn't else. and it wasn't the library's property at the time of the writing. Right, but at this moment. It is now library property, and that means nobody can write it. Nor could you put it back. <clears throat> if writing in it was a bad thing, then nobody can write in it. Again. No, we're going to so go fixed. write in it. I'm sorry, CT. We're going to go write in it. <sighs> uh, isn't that against the rules? Are we... What happens? We no, we, we have to check. Out? No, we just check it out first. We just check it out and then go home, and then we write in it. You can't check out Wanderer Library books. You can't. I thought you could. They can't leave the library. Well, without permission, I guess. If you got permission. Yeah, we just need it. We just need to go talk to Nahima. And get get their permission. Yeah. What could go wrong? Uh, uh. Anyway, can we can I, can I figure out if I have an autobiography now? You can. Yeah, sorry about I'm that. So, I'm no, still no, waiting to find that out. That was important how... because that that five seconds changed everything. But it's fine. Yes. It doesn't change my five seconds. <laughs> Does not uh, change your five seconds. No. <clears throat> not yet. <laughs> uh. You are led through the stacks for an indeterminate amount of time. And then it just stops in front of a shelf. And it is your autobiography that you haven't written, written in 2317. That's a long time from now. It is. Autobiography of uh, 05-08, retired. Nice. Wow. Congratulations. I already know too much. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll grab it off the shelf. You notice that the several entries are redacted and there's little <laughs> scribbles like the redactions were initialed. It just says administrator. Uh... <clears throat> Um, what are you looking for? It's a long journal because apparently in this whatever reality you wrote this in, you were several hundred years old. It's a lot to write. Yeah. Um, I'm looking for like this time period, but maybe like like five to ten years down the line entries. In the uh, 2030s, it appears that you were promoted to the red right hand. A lot of the entries are heavily redacted from that point. Nice. Hey, am I mentioned in there? Just like you hear from that's, behind a book. That's, that's what I'm... <laughs> uh, you, it, it, it goes on to list augmentations that you're like, why the hell would I replace that? It's perfectly working order, but whatever. Uh, they replaced all of your internal joints with higher quality models. They reinforced your skeletal structure, structure essentially with something akin to adamantium, like Wolverine sort of. 
Uh, they vastly improved your natural healing rate, uh, built some weapons into you, replaced your eyes. Red right hand are highly augmented task force. Oh, not your eyes. They're beautiful. And he, like, says that, like, as he's just flipping through the pages. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, are, you re- wait, are you reading your book or... I'm reading book? my book, but for some reason I imagine Emmett can hear Gillian, <laughs> Gillian saying these things. I'm like, I'm, like, mouthing the words, and apparently Emmett can fucking hear really them Really good peripheral the universe. vision. He has really good peripheral vision and hearing, despite also reading his book. Uh, He's good like that. It's how he got his P- double PhD at 25. Right. Yeah, there there's mention of all of these people in there. Uh, Emmett was promoted to director of uh, Site 03 after their redacted cloning. Oh, God. <laughs> really how many digits it? redacted? <laughs> it's about that long. <laughs> In the in the late twenty two hundreds, uh, CT it just like you wrote like a page about CT and the whole page is redacted. The only two words that you can make out are ethics council. Oh Jesus, that's <laughs> uh, amazing. Uh, as for Vandermeer, uh, head of project redacted, also head of uh, appropriation of D class. And then, like, a list of complaints about how D-Class became appropriated after she took over. But our missing friend. However, once she started appropriating D-Class, the amount of appropri- appropriations dropped dramatically because she started resurrecting all the ones that died so that you could just turn them to the meat grinder until they lost their minds. Less wasteful. I guess... Like a recycling program. Mm-hmm. Uh, crane. And then in the last uh, of the ten, the, the time period you're looking at, the last entry about Vandermeer is uh, under consideration for promotion to 05 02. <laughs> that promotion's not gonna, <laughs> that's not on the table anymore. <laughs> I have a feeling. And as you're reading it, you absorb all this knowledge and it sticks in your mind. The text on the page shifts for all of you. About the time that CT is tackling Vandermeer, but you don't know that. Okay. And the whole thing changes to all of you, rogue agent, rogue agent, rogue agent, rogue agent, suspected members of the Chaos Insurgency. Kill on site. We're not even halfway done here. I'm just going <laughs> to warn you. Killian doesn't know what just happened. You do not know. But it's a magic library, so you know. But she's fucking human. She has never been a rogue agent in her fucking life, and she's not starting now. And the last entry, because you're only reading 10 years of your own future, that you read, because this is your autobiography, is, fuck the foundation. If only I'd known the truth sooner. And the chapter ends. She reads the title cover now, that it's, now that the inside changed, she reads the title cover again. Personal Journal of Killian Graves, Killer of O5s. I see this as a total win. And now she's just going to flip to the part where she knows how to save um, Crane. Ah, yes. Uh. And she's going to keep that to herself for later. Okay. Remind me to tell you offline then. CT, you're retcon. What was it you were going after again? I was going after uh, like a journal of the chaos insurgency about us. About you as the players? I mean the the characters. Um. Yes, about us, the players. We want to know about Svenna. <laughs> Let's get real uh, meta. 
specifically about the the taking the SCP agents. So, uh, I'm just looking for a journal that's dated around this time period. So it would so theoretically it would have stuff on the fish people and us getting grabbed and put in the house and what happened with Kane and other things. The Overseer's cancerous anomalous influence on the world is a wound on the fabric of the universe. A wound that festers cannot heal until the irritant is removed. The 13 Foundation Overseers are the irritant in the wound on our reality. The 13 Foundation Overseers must be removed by order of the engineer and those who step down. That's all in caps, those who step down the first letters. We stand in defiance of this aberration. We stand in opposition to this blasphemy against nature. We stand insurgent against this chaos. Our path is clear, our vision unclouded. We must clean out the wound so that the universe can heal. We must destroy the 13 Foundation Overseers. Dr. Maynard has indicated the following names can be used to begin this endeavor. And it lists like 17 names, five of which are yours. They're setting us up. Vandermeer. Reality yeah. deviant. Rewriting the timeline using forbidden daybite technology. Your your actual unredacted real name, CT, that we won't say out loud because no one should know that. <laughs> uh Given enough time, his security clearance will be high enough to benefit us. He will be easy to turn because we will simply tell him the truth. Graves, destined to be red right hand. Manchurian candidate. Dr. Emmett. Soon to be turned by our... Uh, would they use the word ally? Sure. Soon to be turned by our allies in this endeavor. Once he has begun the joining, we will be able to five. What does it say about Crane? Crane. Forcible, uh... Forcible anomalous deviation will need to be enforced in order to use Crane as necessary, according to Redacted. Um, do I recognize any of the names that aren't us? No. However, you do recognize that the entire list was slipped to them by 05. Catch 06. The one Is there a... You all into the foundation. That was 05-04. Yeah. 04, sorry. Is there a... Copy machine. No. There is no copy machine in this library. Good question, though. It also is says it... addendum. And I'm, I'm going to send you this. It's a DM. Is, is there any sort of, like, paper or anything that he can scratch down and, and copy down the list? Since you still he got that take... Sharpie you took from Vandermeer. You can write it on yourself. This is this is the retcon, so this happened before we went in there, so we just didn't have to. No. Sharpie. But give me an intelligence roll. If you succeed, you can remember enough to write it down once you have the sharpie later. <sighs> oh, oh boy. That's fun. That's I actually fun. passed it. Yeah. Excellent. Oh yeah, you did. Heck yeah. Look at Fourteen you. out of forty-five. laptop almost just died um so is he able to remember there long enough is he uh able to remember long enough so that 
we can get out of the, the library before he needs to write this down? Yes, but I mean, you're allowed to write things on yourself. Okay. Because um, you're not library property. I'm going to look around and just check, and then when I have a chance, drop my pants and, and write it on my thigh. Uh, that so is that not I... what I thought you said you were going to write on. Uh, Vandermeer will turn to you and ask if you want to borrow her notebook. <laughs> no, because if we put it in the notebook, then we can't take it out of the library. No, I didn't give. I didn't give the docent the notebook. I tore out a page and gave her gave her that. Vandermeer's notebook is still Vandermeer's notebook. Right, but if I write it, that it, it's been added to in the library, then it, uh, I don't know how these things work. The, he just you'll continues be writing it. And he just continues writing it on his thigh, all the information down on his thigh, and then he pulls his pants up. And... Okay. And then we keep going after the docent, I'm, I'm assuming. Because we need to get SCP-140 back. Yes. You turn a corner and see 20 or 30 docents milling about. They all look exactly the same. None of them are carrying familiar looking journals okay uh vandermeer will go up to a docent and request the most recent copy of uh chronicle of the deva added to the library's inventory it just hovers there for a minute <coughs> and then it turns towards the nearest desk where one of the eyeless things that has a mouth is hovering Okay, Vandermeer goes over to the desk. The eyeless thing looks at you and says, How can I help you, ma'am? In the perfect clipped British accent. I would like to read the most recent copy of the Chronicle of the Deva that has been added to the library's inventory. I Do you know where I can that find that? Checked out. By who? I apologize, ma'am, but we do not divulge information about our patrons without their express permission. I understand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How long ago was that checked out? And it looks at you for a second. It doesn't have eyes. It stares in your general direction for a second with its creepy face. Like it's calculating, and then it says, In your understanding of the variant of time, approximately 4 minutes, 32 seconds, 16 microseconds, 57 milliseconds, and it keeps going. Thank you. Uh, one final question. We, they got a four-minute head start on us. Let's, let's just search. Which way did they go, the, oh, this good individual? Question. Yeah, that's they, a good question. They took away. They have exited the library. The book has been checked out. And you can't tell us which way? It does not lead back to your reality. That's fine. We just want to talk to the person. Uh, CT, you see Vandermeer, like, bristle and, like, her shoulders suddenly tighten and you realize... Uh, you, you're starting to realize that this is her body language for bracing herself for terrible news. If, it, wait. So if, if 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 it's not in our timeline, then it's not our problem anymore, right? It's my problem. I mean, but it, it can't fuck up our timeline if it's in a different timeline. I'll I'll explain what's happening in a in a moment. Okay. I suffice to say that I want that book. All right. Well, uh, how, how do we how do we use the ways? I don't even know how to use it. We'll need graves. Uh, it shouldn't be easy to. It shouldn't be difficult to get her on our side. We'll simply tell her that there's been a containment breach. From somewhere okay. way deep in the library, you hear the loudest scream ever, just screaming your name, Vandermeer, in rage. 
Uh, yeah. So prior to this scream, uh, Killian looks at the title, then like looks back and starts like speed skimming through the book. Um, that like Emma could tell like she's visibly fucking agitated. <laughs> at that moment, then, Mary, is this everything ahead. all right, Sorry. Graves? Did you find out something? Report. And then she finds the page that she's looking for to let her know what the fuck just changed. And she lets out this rageful scream. Oh, um, hey, that doesn't sound good. Hey, come here. And he'll like pause his reading and put like a hand on, on Graves' shoulder just to breathe in with me. Breathe out with me. One, two, three, four, five. There's, there's, there's no calm. <laughs> He's just trying to, like... And hey, hey, it's okay. Mm -hmm. At the moment the scream comes, you're immediately distracted by a much bigger problem. Yeah. Well, yes, of course, ma'am. We can tell you where, but it's not your reality. Simply... Uh, not an addendum. What's the word I'm looking for? Simply a uh, fact for you to note. The patron who has checked out the book has returned to Alagata. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> and what's there a... she goes. What's 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 an Alagata? Wait, what the? <laughs> uh, uh, what am I? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to call you. What's an Alagata? Helagata. 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 Uh, Alagata. <laughs> if you wish to know about Alagata, sir, you may find multiple books on the subject in the library. No, we need graves. I'll explain on the way. Uh, Vandermeer looks shaken. <laughs> uh, she, her, her fist at this point is so clenched so tightly that she... Um, <laughs> it's clenched real tight. Uh... Hey, Hugo. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about being punched in the face? <laughs> uh, Vandermeer will take it. Because okay. It's, it well, I'm asking Hugo because it can't possibly be worse than what's about to happen in Probably Oligata. Probably not. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> you'll see. I know. Uh, Vandermeer will simply sigh angrily and say. Graves, I'm here. You just see her, like, lift her eyes from her book, and she's just like, you. Yes. What the fuck did you do? There has been a containment breach. Really? I just read all of fucking about it, and you've just changed the course of all of our lives. Maybe it's for the better. No. No, uh, we're now road oh. agents. Emmett. Oh. No, no, that's, that's ten years you're... from now. The two of you should, she should stay away from no, friendly strangers. No, she's mad right now. She okay, doesn't got care. it. The, 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 they're, they're, they're coming for us all. She, like, turns it around. This used to read 05-08, and I was retired. You know what it says now? That I killed well, you know, all of them. We can fix it if we go get SCP-140. We know where it is. We just need you to operate the way and get us there. I think I can operate ways now. I'm not fucking helping you. Okay, okay then. Not Vandermeer. Hugo. Okay, yeah. Roll percentile. And I know that Betty's not here, but this is Betty's Elder Gods from the very first session zero. Uh... Sixty-six. Sixty-six. I don't know what I was rolling. It was either high or low. Low would have been good. High was bad. Well, it was a and sixty-six. You, and you doubled down on that high roll. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely not an SK class event. This is an Apollyon class event. Yes. Yeah. Hugo's personal goals have been met. Vandermeer doesn't know this, but it's too late. In Alagato, somebody in a mask has already written in the book, The Scarlet King Awakens. Carry on. Uh, so 
So if Emmett has finished the first book, he's going to inquire about the second book. Um, we we uh, apparently don't have time for books. Um, what, why not? According to, uh, uh, apparently we have to go contain some SCP in some Heligata place. Graves said we're not going anywhere. Julian, we need to go get SCP-140. I guarantee you someone has already written in the book. We can fix this, but we need the book. How about you shouldn't have fucking touched it in the first place? Hang on, I didn't, I didn't hear that. Can you speak up? Oh, <clears throat> how about you shouldn't have fucking touched it in the first place? It. We can... It was dis- in containment. We can discuss that later. No. We can't discuss it later. There is no later. What would you have us do there, then? There obviously is later because the Chaos Insurgency is trying to recruit us and like a 12 other people from SCP and they haven't done it yet. So there's obviously a later because they're going to do that. And we can stop them if we go to Alagada. Look, I wrote them all the names down and I pulled out a chance to show what he wrote down. Like, Why are you taking your pants off? I'm sure these are these are all the names that they they were gonna take that they're trying to get at. We go to Alagada, we get the book, we bring it back, we use it to fix the timeline, and then we track down these names. Graves, are you still holding the journal during all of this? And you have it open because you were like angrily pointing. All those pages are blank now. You flip back until you find writing. Yes, I do. Three months from this date, the world ends in blood and fire, and that whole three months is just horrors that you experience trying to survive. Not the world ending in blood and fire, reality. She, she like, has it held up to her chest because she's not showing them. Something and called the I Hanged agree. King or the Scarlet King or the Something King. And if I agree to go to you to Algada. And we can fix whatever got fucked up in your book. Right? That that that's what you're upset about, right? Because the book changed when you were reading it somehow. I I, I don't is, know how this works. The book is currently in Algada to affect the changes permanently, they would have to take it back to our timeline. This hasn't happened yet. All we have to do is go to Alagata and beat them there. The fact that your book is actively changing as you're reading it means the effects are permanent. Uh, I think where Graves' hands are like curled on around this book, Emmett's going to take his hands and put them on hers and lower it a little and be like, Killian, what do you want us to do? Well, hmm. if I, he like closes the book and puts it back on the shelf. If I'm interpreting this correctly, if I don't help you and we don't go, everything ends in three months. That's correct. Well, that, as, as repeated before, that cannot happen. There is a chocolate Dutch cake being made for Easter. Emmett. Everything can't revolve around your mom's chocolate Dutch cake. You haven't had my mom's chocolate Dutch cake. No, and it's I okay. Won't, so. Well, we're going to fix this, and you're going to have chocolate Dutch cake on Easter. She turns to the nearest docile. Or whatever the hell that Docent. 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 Hmm? I need the nearest waypoint to Algada, please. The docent doesn't have a mouth, but it does have eyes. It looks at you like you're crazy. Then it floats off. 
Fine, I follow it. Okay. So, so now that we're not in a rush to get graves and, and the, we're heading to Helgata, you gonna what is this Helgata thing now? Helgata. Uh, are you? Yeah, I would also with, like to know. Are you familiar with Carnival? New Orleans Mardi Gras. Oh, yeah. Imagine Carnival, but out of H.P. Lovecraft's nightmares. H.P. Who? Like a blast. Like Killian yells down the hallway because she's walking towards his way. <laughs> Who is H.P. Craft? Um, you, 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 you've never heard of H.P. Lovecraft? And it just shakes his head. No. Um, uh, then okay. there's no real reference point for what Oligata's like. I'm sorry. You're just okay. going to have to see this firsthand. Oh, fucked up exciting. racist dude who, who made horror writing books about uh, trippy, scary ass shit. Oh, well, he doesn't sound like an enjoyable individual then. No. Probably not. Pity. I do I, I do have to ask. He is dead, right, Vandermeer? Yes. He did actually die. The, the, the SCP didn't like keep him around to fucking do some fucking shit yes, to monitor yes, the he's, SCP. Yes, he's dead. I, I, I made sure of that my first week at the Foundation. <laughs> Good. I had the same question. Dr. DeBoer, do you happen to have anything that can, any herbs on you that can instantly kill whoever ingests them? I have several. Great. Please distribute that to everyone here before we enter Alagata. Uh, okay. I think he finds whatever is the quickest and least painful and hands that to Killian. Uh, and it'll go uh, descending order of quickest and least painful, like least painful to Killian, uh, then to Dr. Vanderveer, then to CT, and then last to himself. CT just pulls out his bag of pills and be like, no, nah, I'm good. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, the docent takes you out of the stacks and into some of the winding, twisting, labyrinthine, non-Euclidean corridors of the library and just kind of you in one oh, intersection uh, from different angles of physics. Before you go, um, Mr. Dosen, Mix Dosen, um, could I check out that botany book that I had mentioned about wanting? We can come back for it, Dr. DeBoer. We might all die, so. Why do you need to read it if we all die? Pleasure. If you die with the book checked out, you're just depriving the other future readers of reading the book. But it won't reality be destroyed? Ways of regaining that. Dr. DeBoer, I promise I will personally bring you back here so you can have the book. Please, we need to go. Okay, okay, fine, fine. He actually looks a little pouty for once. It's just a desk with a single piece of paper on it like it's ripped out of a journal and an old-fashioned ink quill. The desk itself is covered in iconography that is all horror all the time. It makes you feel nauseous just to look at it. If this was an H.P. Lovecraft novel, you wouldn't know how to describe it, but you'd try anyways. Uh, the piece of paper is an old-timey, uh, very... Like calligraphic English. Calligraphic. Uh, calligraphic. Okay. I could probably help with that. I've been reading. It says. Then it like steps up. It says it stood so damn proud, just radiating arrogance. Couldn't understand a word it said, and yet every syllable dripped with narcissistic venom. It 
brought a hand to where a mouse should have been and laughed and laughed. And then we destroyed ourselves for its amusement. Bones were shattered, flesh and organs ruptured, all for its amusement. We ruined ourselves in body and mind, and the whole time we screamed and begged, yet only silence parted our lips. I'm so sorry, I tried to say. I'm so sorry. Their eyes pleaded for mercy and asked for forgiveness. In the end, I was the only one left alive, surrounded by the corpses of my ravaged friends and comrades. But I understand now. The ambassador needed a witness, one to deliver its message way to Alagata, and then a ritual at the bottom of the script. Mm. That's where we pause till next week. Dun dun dun. <sighs> I really messed up. Really? Did you, Hugo? Did you? Did yeah. you mess up? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna strangle you. But not not in the way that I wanted to mess up, which is... <laughs> <laughs> Because I didn't realize that was my own timeline. If I had known that was our timeline, I would have stood there and just finished the book. <laughs> I wouldn't have resisted. Well, security breach has been detected, audience. Mimetic agents have been released. We are closing the database and purging unauthorized access. Please try logging in again next week. As for other terrifying tales and awesome adventures you can enjoy with us between now and then on Mondays, we are playing Dune and Solemn Vale on Tuesdays. Twilight 2000 and Mecha Hack. On Wednesdays, The One Ring. On Thursdays, Vampire the Requiem and Pathfinder 2E. On Fridays, Call of Cthulhu and 5E. Uh, Scarred Lands. On Saturdays, Warhammer 40K, followed by this game, of course. And on Sundays, the new Kickstarter uh, Plan Jaya 5E supplement from Atlas Games and Cult Divinity Lost. Foundation agents, let the viewers know the next show they can catch you in. Between now and next week, and anything else cool you do online, they can check out. I am Zachary Naldra at He Him. You can find me on the Bird app at Zach Rules. It probably says my name spelled out somewhere below here. Uh, he Him. Um, I. Uh, you're probably not going to see me online for a while because uh, it, it's December and there's there's packs unplugged. Uh, if you go there, you can see me. Otherwise, you're probably not going to see me for a while. Um, that's it. Hey, uh, I am Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Myth Emo Fox. I played Killing Graves with a new title, Killer of O Fives. It's fine. It's totally fine. Nothing. I, this is a total uh, win. Well, no, it's not. Not to Killian, anyway. Anyway, um, tomorrow you can find me on my own Twitch channel streaming alongside Oh Hello Mare with some Stardew Valley goodness in the morning. Uh, and then you can find me in the evening back here on Warple Tales for Cult Divinity Lost, where I play Garnet, our totally nice character. She's not nice at all. On Monday, you can find me on Vorpal Tales uh, in Solemn Vale. Uh, Thursday, you can find me on Vorpal Tales for Pathfinder. Uh, and then I'm going on a little trip. I'm not going to PAX, unfortunately, uh, but I am going to go see my lovely fiance, Eldred Echoes. <laughs> Oh, hey, that's me. Uh, I'm Kay, and tonight I play Dr. Emmett DeBoer, who is a uh, much pouty face about botanical books and not knowing where his future is apparently is, but eh, he'll, he'll make it work. He trusts Graves, it'll be fine. Uh, you can catch me here on Monday, similarly with our lovely Savannah, playing Solemn Vale, where I play Hank, or as uh, my aunt calls me, the boy. Boy. <laughs> boy. I'm totally channeling uh, boy. God of War. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> boy. Uh, unfortunately, similar to Zach, I will not be here this Saturday for our lovely game as I will be at PAX Unplugged. Uh, feel free to come find me and hang out, chat, talk about cool TTRPGs. I'll be around for all hours of con as soon as it opens and probably getting kicked out when it ends. Nice. Yeah, I think you're muted. Here we go. Yeah, I'm muted. Uh, I am Hugo Guzman. You can find me online pretty much anywhere at Sevatar underscore underscore underscore. Uh, today I played Dr. Jane Vandermeer, 
uh, would be Devastani uh, freedom fighter, currently responsible for the end of reality. I just, oh, I really messed up. <laughs> ah, jeez. Um, and uh, ah, jeez, Rick. Yeah, yeah, right. I have a, I have a friend who says that, like, whatever, like, she messes up somehow, somewhere. She just goes, ah, jeez, Rick. Uh, I don't think she even knows anyone named Rick. And uh, I will be here again next week for SCP because that's my only game, unless this is canceled, uh, in which case I'll probably be hanging out with my girlfriend or something. Excellent. And now for the ride or dive. Oh, that Hugo has a girlfriend. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm happy with my friends. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Stolen fires is correct. You said it on stream. It's official now. Oh god, god. <laughs> uh, has it been? Has it been posted on Facebook yet? No, it hasn't. So it's so not. It doesn't official. matter. Not Our engagement was announced on Twitch. It's it was official immediately after that. So it's fine. Also, it can't be official for another 14 days because I am currently banned on Facebook. Oh. So I won't be able to what post it. What did you it. do this time? I, I mean, I, well, she could have posted it, though. Hugo, the real conspiracy theorist that gets banned off of Facebook all the time. You should take notes, Zach. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, you need to. You need to listen to my capitalism is an AI from the future rant. And now for the ride or dive viewers, it's vote time. Viewers, your votes are uh, <laughs> worth one extra roll of luck points at the beginning of each session. And players, your votes for each other are worth one get out of end of reality free card in the normal order vote. I, I Vandermeer is getting the vote. Oh, thanks. I mean, the one that figured out that the seal wasn't broken. And then the one that uh, had some, some fun with the book. I begrudgingly give my vote to Vandermeer because I want to fucking strangle you right now. <laughs> it is uh, a pretty full swoop here. My vote also goes to Vandermeer. Oh my god. Thank that you. was just buckshot, wild, insane. <laughs> Uh, and my vote goes to Emmett, actually, uh, because I love how just earnest Emmett is. Baby. Excellent to being excellent to each other. That's it for us for now, audience. We have to go stop an SK class world ending event because of Hugo. So we'll see you next week. Good night. <laughs> I really night. messed up. Uh, have a wonderful <laughs> night. Good night.